everyone a very warm welcome to all of you in today's live session manosala aims to prioritize the mental mental health care solution which not only focuses on clinical therapy but also focuses on alternative therapy in india so our today's th- topic is one of my favorite topic which is alternative therapy i tamanna rajpal will be hosting today's live session i am an expert with manosala and a counseling psychologist At Manushala, we strongly believe that each one of us is unique and our own ways of healing. This is why we are working to bring multiple evidence-based therapies from CBT, RBT, music, color, storytelling, dance movement, drama, mindfulness, and other in one platform. We want every individual to be empowered enough to choose from a set of therapies which work from them. So our today's topic is about we all have heard about different clinical therapies like CBT, RBT, but we with time evidence and time base, a new lot of new therapies have been introduced like drama therapy, music therapy, art therapy, EFT, emotional focus techniques, hypnotherapy. So today we will be discussing various modalities of creative art. therapies to clear out doubts with a panel of our experts from creative art therapies so i would be welcoming all of them so first we have aprajita then we have anshul and then we have shruti so aprajita is a board certified therapist mta and a member of member in a good standing with the canadian association of music therapy she completed her masters in music therapy and bachelor's also in music therapy anshul is a queer affirmative mental health practitioner trained clinical hypnotherapist life skill and personal safety facilitator jeki master artist dancer theater actor and a facilitator shruti she or they are an hcp uk registered drama therapist queer affirmative therapist comic theater artist and an inspiring clown born and brought up in india currently Shruti is happily struggling to module its drama training to serve the Indian context, and I think she is still struggling with that. So I would just say hi to everyone and welcome you all to to today's session, and thank you for joining in. So before we begin, I would be clearing, I would be going around how we would be going through it to make the audience more clear about it. So we will be quickly looking into what are the various creative art therapies. and their applications then their use with several disorders and finally some case study hope you enjoyed the session so our first modality we are in a country where creative art therapy, uh, therapies are still being introduced so can so can you please take a moment to explain the audience about what your respective therapies so that exactly we people will get to know what we are discussing so i would start with abhishek thank you tamanna so if i had to explain music therapy very simply it's uh, primarily the use of music but to achieve non musical goals so what happens is uh, especially internationally certified music therapists use music purposefully within a therapeutic relationship to support health and well being and music therapists know how to use music safely ethically to address you know human needs within um cognitive communicative emotional uh physical social spiritual domains amongst many others so overall that's the that's music therapy but i would say the definition is still expanding growing like you said right um with so much research being involved but currently this is how i would uh define it okay thank you so i just wanted to know one thing you have been practicing internationally or you have tried in in india as well so yeah i've primarily just been practicing in canada last summer i worked just with two children on the autism spectrum but nothing more yeah okay 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 now i would go forward with anshul if you can explain about it so mine is a very eclectic approach <laughs> but um, the basis of it is very somatic it's like our body is existing in a energetic flux any thought any comment any experience is impacting the flux that my body exists in so it starts with the body it starts with the feelings hypnotherapy is very like clear that the it 
uses hypnosis. And hypnosis is not exactly, there is like this Eastern and Western hypnosis. So it is uh, used in a clinical setting. It's not mind control. It is just exploring mind as a whole. So mind as a whole means like what we can access by ourselves is the conscious mind, are the things that we, we should do, the things that make sense, the things that uh, seem right. But then uh, the behavioral aspects where we say uh, that uh, this happens and I don't know why. Yeah. So that means there is a part of the mind that believes that something else that happens naturally is the safer thing to do. So using hypnosis, we explore the mind fully. We explore the unconscious from where the natural behaviors come in. And uh, in hypnosis also, the approach is very somatic. The approach is you take the urgency, you take the crisis out of the body. So breath work is a part of it. Visualization is a part of it. EFT is again part of it. It can also be used along with hypnosis with the technique called EFT unpeeling. Um, so it's very, very body-based, like rather than um, the conventional thought and talk therapy. Okay. Thank you, Anshul. So I have this question from you. So EFT, like music and drama are all also coming very slowly in India. Like, I think uh, the first time I heard about drama therapy was from Shruti only. I still remember, like, we were sitting together and she told me about drama therapy. That was the first time as a psychologist, like, going into the career of psychology, I heard about drama therapy. What about EFT? Like, is EFT also having a struggle? Like, all ordinary therapies are facing struggles in, in getting introduced to the OP, the clients. I think EFT or... Or any alternate modality for that matter, uh, because Indians come from that uh, that uh, conventional understanding of there should be a degree course. It should have like a university should teach it and all of that. So the academia and the conditioning around the academics is uh, still very conventional. So I feel that anything that is certificate based, that is emerging and uh, that is alternate is uh, uh, I think without even trying there is a slight hesitation while what alternate is that if I have to go from point A to B there is a straight route and the other route is the alternate route so it's not like I'm not going to be but it's it's just the hesitation of the lesser tried, the newer things. So I think um, everything that's emerging is, uh, there is a struggle, there is this need to prove, but uh, uh, I, like, I mean, I mean, I think I can see that in the stance of uh, Shruti and uh, Aparajita, both of them that I think as, as alternate therapy practitioners, we have to remove that belief from our own selves that we have to remove that hesitation. Sometimes it creeps in us also <laughs> when there is this uh, these doubts and we have to explain it to people. But it's a journey and uh, we are the frontline workers of the journey and many others. So the support, uh, I think, helps. The community support, uh, the mental health practitioners supporting each other. Thank you, Anshu. Now we would come to shoot if you can explain about your modality. Yeah. Uh, so like whenever I have to express uh, about drama therapy, the very first thing I tell uh, individuals is that you do not have to be a theater artist uh, to benefit from drama therapy or to even become a drama therapist because drama therapy is not about, you know, creating a beautiful performance for the audience, rather it is about using the tools of drama like storytelling, role play, uh, different other modes like improv theater to explore our emotions and thoughts in a therapeutic setting. So uh, I would say that the intention and goal of drama therapy is same as traditional psychotherapy. However, along with only verbal communication, we also have an option for different other tools to express ourselves. 
and this is not the drama that we see in movies this is not the drama that we see on stage uh, it is the form of drama which is very innate to us since the day we were born like as kids we must remember when we used to engage in uh, pretend play like teacher teacher doctor doctor so imagination and creativity is something very innate to us and drama therapy works with this principle that instead of just focusing on what we can talk about in words we are focusing on our body we can explore our thoughts and emotions through actions and there can be a distance uh, between us and the problem through the distance that we create from these creative mediums of stories and role play thank you shruti so shruti how this came an idea that you want to become a drama therapist because in india we are still struggling to know about alternative therapies and everything and while we were into the graduation we were not even aware about it so what made you realize that you want to go for drama therapy i think i was a theater artist so like exploring the impact of theater on my own self i would often take my experience as an actor into my uh, therapy into my talk therapy so that made me realize about you know that you know drama can have such an intense uh, impact on us and when i googled i realized okay this this is not unique to my observation there is a field called drama therapy which already exists there Okay thank you so much Shruti I would come to our another question which is basically it and it is from all the experts in what type of issues disorders and illness can creative art therapy help and how does one think about this application and adoption in life and how does any one of the person can select that they want to go for art therapy drama therapy music therapy or eft and do we have to combine them with various other uh, like like do we have to combine them with normal cbt or rbt or we can only work with art therapy or any art, music therapy or drama therapy so i would first go with aprajita um so i think my short answer is that yes it can help with all kinds of illnesses um mental health needs uh but it is very individualistic so let's say if uh, you know there are two people who have depression a music therapy session would look very different for both of them because you know we look at the causes for those to, for their depression it could be genetic it could be situational it could be for very different reasons and hence the goals that we want to meet through our music therapy session would look very different because we're looking at the underlying reasons for what's triggering their depression what's coming in the way of their qualitative life experience um in my general personal experience i want to highlight that when i work uh, you know with a client so when i was working at a hospital in montreal with children with mental health needs i often didn't look at their case files before meeting them because you know sometimes i find that we can be very biased in our approach when we interact with someone right when we know they have depression or anxiety we often overlook uh, you know the person as a whole and their strengths and instead just focus on the diagnosis so of course i have basic information that i need to get started in my assessment um but the reason why i mention this is because i want to reiterate that yes music therapy can help with all kinds of mental health needs because we're looking at the person as a whole um and then like to your other question and its application so i think in general any therapist and i'll talk from music therapy point of view we just have to be very mindful about what kind of music is being used you know depending on their history um like for example if you know someone has schizophrenia and is experiencing disorganized thinking then a music therapist will not use like you know structured lyric analysis with them because that can sort of threaten their safety and increase their chances of delusion you know based on what they're analyzing in the lyrics and it can further like decrease their reality orientation so just to say that one has to be very mindful music sometimes people just think oh music it's lovely right but again it has clinical ways of being used so that's one thing in its application that one has to be mindful again like if i will not use music relaxation with someone who has psychosis uh, depending on you know where they are because they're unable to be tolerating that increased awareness of internal experiences you know that's again it's contraindicated for their well-being um and and i think you know one way to decide what creative art therapy would fit best for you is simply 
to see firstly what you are drawn to like let's say music or dance that's one simple way to sort of you know choose but another is like one needs to ask themselves why they're firstly opting for therapy and why they're looking at a what they're looking to get out of it you know and there's so much on the internet that they can sort of explore like just typing in what they're looking for and that might help them land on what kind of creative art therapy and um, yeah if someone is really curious to try an alternative format and like Shruti mentioned that not just a verbal component but a creative channel to your emotions then that's another reason to try creative arts therapies and figure out which one so thank you prajita now we would come to anshul that what are her point of views regarding the same um so because uh, there is like there are so many things so many uh, uh, and and my approach is also very intuitive uh, like i think it is uh, it because we are not just interacting with the words we are not just uh, like sort of fixating on the thoughts we are going deeper i think there is a connection on a deeper level so it is very uh, individualistic but it also it's like there should be a and there should be a realization that there is a problem and if the person is in an ungrounded space say for example if uh, uh, they are already so hyper vigilant with their lived experiences or their realities where they are coming from then i mostly start with eft because that is grounding that is more connecting to the body i would never do hypnotherapy with a person like that because hypnosis is already like then like there is an aspect of tra- uh, as to travel to different spaces and times and lives and all of that so uh, so that is the criteria so that is what i look for if the person is already very anxious or very like ungrounded leaving zoning out all of that so bringing them into the body connecting them into the body making them feel safe into the body in itself works wonders um particularly this modality i think i would suggest to people whose head has become smarter than uh, what they think uh, like what they think of themselves or or the solution finding part of them so uh, so if in certain cases the trauma or the experiences are so intense that uh, to deal with it my coping has become like really really sharp so that if i go for talk therapy my mind will talk the therapist out and it will be running around in circles so i think i uh, uh, i would recommend people who are experiencing this that that circular experience in talk therapy to maybe explore hypnotherapy and eft or body based things thank you anshul for that answer so now i would come to shruti so shruti if you can i and in fact i have always heard that music does help but what about drama therapy like can drama therapy can also be used with all disorders this is something i feel very important for me to know yeah yeah so i think the drama therapy the word in itself can feel extremely scary especially when we are talking of talking about psychosis and schizophrenia where already we have so many different uh, voices inside us outside of us so often you know we can feel that you know if trauma therapy is going to trigger the state the state of psychosis even more however i completely resonated with aprajita when you know she told about most of the time she wouldn't even look at you know the case uh, studies before uh going inside the session so that was my experience as well when i worked in a hospital setting in london where there were uh, psychiatric patients some had schizophrenia psychosis uh, some had the history of uh, being a criminal so even you know in these intense settings going without uh, reading their symptoms often helped me to make a more human to human connection with them and drama therapy you know really happens in the moment with a more intuitive understanding of with a, with like more safety so like in drama therapy we all, we always start with warm up then we go into the 
process and then we always ground ourselves so at the end of the session if you know we have explored the story of a lion and a mouse where i am a lion but at the end of the session it is ensured that i know that i am shruti and this is what i am going to do after the session so from the bodily experience from a more deeper experience we always bring ourselves back to cognition so that we can separate you know imagination and reality uh, while also you, you you know being aware of the fact that uh, how our real life stories are also located in the world of uh, imagination and also uh, you know due, due to this thing of traditional talk therapies being uh, more uh, famous than creative arts therapies often it is you know perceived that we have some kind of a tussle with the biomedical lens or with the psychiatrist but that's not true we work in collaboration with psychiatrists and the therapists although our lenses are different but we know when we are working with a client all lenses are important for them like the medicines are important the talk therapy is important cbt is important plus uh an approach like creative arts therapy can be important where you know we are moving beyond their disease but we are focusing on the person behind the disease and we are fulfilling the needs of connection care love self expression which might not be fulfilled you know in those other forms of therapies uh thank you shruti so i have this very important question from pratita and shruti so can we combine both music and drama together for a client like the can that happen um okay i can go first yeah i mean i i think it has to be done in an informed way because like you know shruti is talking about drama therapy i really i resonate with a lot of it but again i cannot do what you know she like what they can do you know in a in a session so uh, again i've never done it i would love to see how that works i have seen studies where people have taken techniques of music in a drama therapy session or the other way around um yeah and maybe shruti would be able to add more on that yeah yeah so like in our uh, practice which is the sesame drama therapy we use a lot of songs and especially the songs which uh, has been traditional to Uh, the communities in our practice however still we would wouldn't call it music therapy we are using uh, songs and singing but we have to be very mindful about the fact that we are not music therapists so as a drama therapist i would always be mindful about the fact how deep i am taking my clients into that process i i'll take them only to the extent which you know um i can hold and like there is one one of the books which is called acting and singing using archetypes which i think is a good example of how music and drama uh, can be combined into a practice but however like um yes uh, still we need to be mindful of that a drama therapist doesn't call themselves a music therapist just because we are using music okay thank you for that answer so i just another question so i am very curious to know when i am joining a music therapy that is for aprajita that when i am joining a music therapy workshop or a session uh, it may be directly uh, related to healing relationship burnout what happens in the session and what is the exact impact will i will feel after the post session so again like i mentioned earlier it's uh, uh, it's so individualistic right and like how even uh, like both anshul and shruti mentioned that there's a lot of intuition at play so it it looks so different right like you have a plan in mind for someone based on their history what they're looking for but to like say like how you would exactly feel is actually how exactly you are looking to feel and we are trying to navigate that and get to that point by you know um trying different ways through music so um i mean i could give you an idea of a general structure of a session so if like i'm meeting my client for the first time you know i'll spend two sessions at least doing an assessment and what is an assessment really it's you know i'm largely looking at of course they're diagnosed what and what they're looking also in a holistic way um you know their social emotional well being their community needed but just to understand if they have any existing relationship with music um their motor skills that whatever we have determined together and sometimes 
I, with my client, I determine their goals. Like what are they looking to get out of the session, depending on their cognitive independence or I'll involve their caregivers, what are the goals or, you know, whoever's involved in their lives or sometimes just independently, I would have to come up with those goals. That whatever we have determined together and sometimes I, with my client, I determine their goals. Like what are they looking to get out of the session, depending on their cognitive independence or I'll involve their caregivers, what are the goals or, you know, whoever's involved in their lives or sometimes just independently, I would have to come up with those goals. If you can explain about this. Like I said, the starting point is catching up with the client. Um, mostly uh, the diagnosis, if at all there is, uh, only matters to see that if, uh, say for example, if they already are on any kind of medication, and how the experience has been around with the medication. So if doing hypnotherapy can be all the more like uh, spiraling for them as an experience, uh, I think it's just for that matter. Uh, but uh, the starting is... Okay. So my now the question is with, uh, from Aprajita. Aprajita, I'm very curious to know that if a person wants to go for a music therapy session, like for relationship, burnout... What exactly happens in the session and what is the impact and for how long do we have to take the session? Like in CBT, it's compass, I feel in CBT, it's some compass that you have to have very frequent sessions. Then it gets slowed down. So what about music therapy? Um, so this is my always my initial answer to anyone that, like I said earlier also that music therapy is very uh, in a session it's very individualistic you really you don't have a fixed uh, formula for everybody you're using looking at them meeting them one-on-one -on -one and seeing what their needs are so it's uh it's very difficult to like sort of give you an exact uh, nature of what the session would look like but i can give you a general sense of the structure so when i'm meeting somebody for the first time it usually starts with an assessment and it usually spans over at least two sessions. Sometimes it can be three, less or more, but that's the first part of, you know, I think any uh, therapeutic relationship building. And um, then the assessment, it, like there are like a few parameters that are essential to sort of assess uh, apart from their specific needs, also looking at their social, emotional, well-being, their communication skills, their music uh, background, history, if any, if they have a relationship with music, even if they don't have a relationship, reasons around that, uh, their motor skills, cognitive skills, so etc, cetera, etc, cetera, many parameters that we assess. And of course, this entire assessment is based on music interventions and uh, part of it may be verbally processed later, uh, depending on where and what's making them more comfortable, because Again, using music suddenly can be scary. Like Shruti mentioned earlier, just the idea of drama therapy or art or music, people are like, oh, but I don't have any of these talents or however they you know, label that. So again, coming back to the question. So in an assessment, when let's say if I'm assessing uh, somebody's um, fine motor skills, then I would you know, bring a bunch of handheld instruments small instruments like shakers, uh, you know, how they're playing the piano. Um, and, you know, that would give me an idea of where their fine motor skills are on a spectrum. And um, if we are like you asked about burnout, so really like trying to figure out their emotional well-being, where, how, you know, what's happening there. Again, I would bring in experiences and engage them in music based improvisation activities. That's probably one way of doing it. A lot of people in my experience have used like songwriting. Um, depends where they are, but that allows for a lot of uh, material to come out, like a lot of unconscious uh, patterns that emerge. Uh, and again, this won't happen right away in an assessment session. This happens as we start our therapeutic journey. So um, again, looks very different for anyone. And then when someone's playing music, you know, then we're trying to understand because uh, what's happening there. Like if someone's playing very fast, someone's very slow, someone's playing you know, in a very um, distracted way, busy way, it depends. There's so many observations. We're just making observations and trying to connect the dots uh, with the, the person in front of us and also our relationship and how they're using music in a session. So um, again, it's very hard to say what happened, but 
structure is this that there's an assessment and then also when we begin our journey i try to keep a very standard opening um activity so if it's with kids it'll be something like a song that they know and if it's with adults i have to of course be mindful like i can't go in with a hello song with you know adults i have to understand where they stand and use a different but there will be a one thing that kind of reassures them grounds them that okay this is what we're going to do this is where we're starting it could be a simple breath work to music and um yeah, so it's a structured opening and closing and then flexibility to just break out of the structure in between. And to your question, when you ask, you know, how many sessions are needed? Again, it's so, you know, so individualistic, really depends on things. I've had clients where I worked with them for two months and I have someone who I've been working with for the last two years. So, of course, the goals keep evolving over the, those two years. It's not the same goals we started with. We're expanding the journey. Um, and of course, it's uh, you have to know when to terminate a therapeutic relationship. It's very important. You can't just keep dragging it, even if people are like, oh, you know, this is so great. Like, but if you think the goals have been met, then it's important to terminate that relationship. So, yeah, that's how I would explain it. Thank you, Prajita. Now, my question is from Shruti. So, don't you uh, think that people might feel a bit uh, intimidated to share their feelings in a group of 20 people during a creative art session. So what would be your views regarding this? Yeah, uh, you know, I think the groups can be really scary. They can be really intimidating. And, you know, a group setting can bring up, you know, all sort of memories of school where, you, you know, you might have been judged or where your trust might have been broken and not just school like it was just an example but all our previous memories of being in a group uh, however as a drama therapist in my training it was compulsory to go for group therapy plus we also had a group process where we were intensively trained into different uh, group dynamics to be able to you know be aware about all the uncomfortable emotions which come up in a group process and besides that we also have some practical policies in place like that of confidentiality that one member whatever they are sharing another member in the group cannot reveal their information outside of the group so these are like uh, to name a few the, these are a few things which ensure that you know the experience of a group can be safe for an individual and, you know, sometimes groups uh, also move to, uh, from the feelings of feeling scared to the feelings of belongingness, care and love. So it's a continuous process, which is very much helped by the drama therapist and the group itself. Thank you, Shruti. bipolar and how does one can understand that uh, we can offer creative therapy because I remember I have been working on expressive art therapy like I am doing a course so there I was told that schizophrenia can't be used for express like expressive art therapy can't be used for schizophrenia but I want to know your views that can drama music or any other therapy like EFT or hypnotherapy can be used for schizophrenia I especially have this question so I can start with the Prajita Yeah, I think that, that is a great question. And I, in my experience, I have not worked with uh, uh, many personality disorders and schizophrenia. Um, but I did, I mean, I've like seen a lot of studies and I think there was one um, research study from like very recently, I think 2019-20, where uh, in the United States, you know, where they talked about how um, music specifically helps to build a stronger connection between a therapist and a patient, especially in uh, in the case of schizophrenia, because, you know, some of the symptoms are that there's a lot of suspicion and delusion, right? And music sort of helps as a third element to regulate that relationship between uh, a patient and a therapist. And it really helps to build that trust, which is very critical to any therapeutic relationship. Um, and because it's a, it's it kind of disarms the patient, you know, it, it makes them more relaxed. Is uh, you know when music is involved, and it's uh, it's talking about music, but about themselves through the music. So that study talked about how uh, when music was introduced in the session, 
and the person who did have schizophrenia talked so much about the music and why they enjoyed that music, what they didn't like. And that's where their journey began. And then that I think they uh, sort of followed uh, about 10 schizophrenic uh, patients uh, and they followed their journey for over a year. And then they saw that I think about 80% of those patients remained in treatment and found that it really added to their qualitative life experience. So um, I think that itself is a, you know, is an evidence of how music can be used uh, for people with schizophrenia. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Aprajita. Now I would move to Anshul. Um, so in my experience, I've worked with the person who was not, they did not, they chose not to go for a diagnosis, but there was, uh, one of the symptoms was auditory hallucinations. Um, but like I said, again, the starting was very grounding, very grounding so that like there is always this anchoring. Initially, the work was all around anchoring to the reality so that we have a solid, solid script to come back and wherever we explore. And uh, and surprisingly, like uh, although, um, like because it was uh, my first experience working with a person like that and I had not seen many uh, cases being discussed, um, it was like a, a trauma which was layered and the hypnotherapy was very helpful that way. But, but uh, like I'm glad that I was like in that in the mentorship uh, period at that time. And so I was assisted constantly with my mentor. And uh, uh, so the initial grounding and all of that, all of, uh, all of that helped. But EFT, coming to EFT because it's very body-based, and uh, it, it does not like take you away from the present. It in fact brings you more and more into the present moment. Um, I think it, it can be, it can like everything can be worked with uh, using EFT. Yeah. Thank you, Anshul, for that answer. I would move to Shruti that how drama therapy can help, like in something, because in Signophania, we have a lot of personality disorders. And in bipolar, also we have maniacs. So, how drama therapy can help? Yeah. Um, uh, so, to answer this question, like uh, you, you know, Anshul uh, mentioned about uh, the grounding aspect. So, whenever we are working with like severe mental health difficulties, we specifically focus on a lot of grounding to keep the experience of drama therapy and engaging with imagination and creativity safe for the individual. So I have worked in a lot of settings where uh, we have introduced drama therapy where already medicines and therapy has uh, been given to the patients. And after that, they are transitioning to their life. But drama therapy is used as a bridge from treatment to going back to the life. So in that transition, we are working with the groups where, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, schizophrenia and psychosis and other uh, severe mental health difficulties so that we can also begin to connect with each other so that we can also begin uh, to, you know, understand that uh, the symptoms are not our identity, that we are also many other things other than just our pathology. And often in, you know, the traditional lenses, often creativity and imagination can be pathologized. And, you know, like sometimes uh, in drama therapy, even as a therapist, like, uh, you, you know, sometimes I was able to sense, uh, you know, a shared sense of madness that what we call, you know, as mad, sometimes it can have such rich healing resources for, for us. And the line between, you know, the uh, what we call as abnormal and normal is really, you know, thin. And somewhere uh, when we stop pathologizing creativity and imagination, when, you uh, you know, we can give that space to different uh, voices. It can lead uh, to healing. And here, like, I'm not trying to romanticize mental health difficulties, but just offering a, 
a uh, different perspective and if i may i can li- like share a short example so while working in a hospital setting there were a patient who uh, were experiencing auditory hallucinations and they were talking to their different voices here and there um there were two different voices they were talking to in the session so and for 50 minutes we were just passing pa- passing the ball to each other so we were sitting and we were connecting only through the act of passing the ball to each other passing and catching passing and catching and now you know like aprajita has mentioned how music therapy so individualistic so you know same is for drama therapy so uh, passing the ball so someone from outside can see what good is it doing but for us in that moment it was the way to connect besides um the vo- voices and it was a way to connect with those voices as well instead of trying to you know stop them or fix them thank you shruti for this amazing answer and thank you for clearing my doubt so now my question is with aprajita how can we combine them with clinical practices hospitals healing from physical illness um i i like to advocate for music therapy itself as a clinical discipline and you know we are um, collaborating i think through and through with uh, psychologists physiotherapists you know in a palliative care rehabilitative centers and across the world so that's already starting out and i think it's important because an interdisciplinary approach for one individual is a holistic way to look at things and you know uh, just for their overall well being and um, i have for instance worked uh, in collaboration with physiotherapists when i was working with a stroke patient so uh, you know as we may know that stroke patients a lot of times like almost 80% of survivors struggle with uh, their uh, mobility and their ability to walk is like drastically impacted um, and you know music therapy can address that so there's something called um, rhythmic entrainment so what happens is it's a it's a technique where you're sort of synchronizing movement to a rhythm and because we such a universal stimulant a lot of times we will notice that when we are on a walk and we're listening to music we're actually often walking to the exact beat of the song playing so it's very internal synchronization that happens um and it may seem like a very simple practice but uh, it's proven to like actually improve people's stride of length and their timing between steps so um you know you can collaborate with physiotherapists like i said with psychologists with other uh, clinical professionals but that openness is needed and that curiosity to learn and see where that middle point happens because again the awareness is so low even about alternative therapies like i'm i find myself explaining what my profession is every other day and i also come up with so many different definitions so so yeah i think that openness is very important thank you prajita for that make people more secure and comfortable about creative art therapy and i would really want that after prajita shruti and anshul can all put their points as well on that yeah i think it's a great question and something i'm trying to be aware of for myself because i think as a community of mental health practitioners we are all working towards a shared goal we just have very different approaches um and i think it's um, like you know anshul mentioned in the beginning especially in india that that they need like the indian mentality or our convention needs that there's a degree right and so well even if it's not a degree what is the training that's involved in getting to that point i think there needs to be awareness around that so for instance just for a certified music therapist you know they do have to do a, view, a bachelor's in music and psychology they have to complete a 1000 hour supervised clinical internship and then they have to write a licensed exam that gives them the permission to practice and then they have to continue uh, getting credits uh, do continuing education so being involved in different ways of uh, there's just their learning so i think um, it's important to raise that awareness and distinction on the use of music in a clinical setting uh, that has clinical value like 
uh, just listening to Shruti and Anshul today so much I have understood, right? And while we're all working towards that shared goal. So I think that's important just um, to uh, really because well, we are not secure because we don't know how it's done. So I think once we kind of know how it's done, we may not know how to do it, but just the, that awareness sort of helps to make one feel more com comfortable and secure because just saying that I don't know how it's done and accepting that can be the starting point to uh, that. So uh, this for me is an opportunity to learn a little bit more about their uh, modalities. And I think that's the steps we can take as a community. Um, yeah, and that actually helps with referrals and it's not at okay. random, you know, when you're referring a client to another person or to another creative art therapist. Thank you, Prajita, for guiding us more about it. Shruti Hansen, do you want to add any point on it? Um, I just feel that in my own experience, uh, I've been uh, working at Authentic Living with two clinical psychologists. Um, earlier, uh, it was uh, in my uh, my experience has been so that if I have uh, say uh, there is a physical for a physical issue there is a medical intervention required and I have suggested uh, uh, the person to go to a informed doctor and they have called uh, alternate healing uh, or alternate therapists a quack. Or, or or like a hobby and uh, it does not cater to and so I've had my share of SAR experiences as well but um, I think it comes from the shift where here at Authentic Living um, people are open and they understand that there is this one goal and uh, there is already uh, like so much to be done around awareness, around mental health. Whoever you go and get informed wherever you go that is okay so we are all part of a team and uh, i think uh, more individuals coming up and it's it's a very individualistic point of view um, it has been a year that we have been working together and there is so much understanding and we have like um, we have had master classes where we collaborate uh, their understanding and then an experiential bit of, uh, of hypnotherapy or a guided meditation or breath work or uh, other things. So it's we are almost there we, where we can sort of create mixed experiences. And they are so intense because now there is an experiential bit that makes you feel lighter. But before that, it's also backed up with information. And uh, we work every day with connecting the dots and, and the middle ground that I think Shruti spoke about. It's such a nice feeling to reach there uh, and uh, to find that oh yeah we are in a way actually on the same journey and uh, we can wave at each other we are just we've just cho chosen different paths which are running parallelly and there are so many points to meet each other uh, it's just a matter of time I think that uh, we get there because um, it, it just shifted my experience and now I'm more open to talking to uh, clinical psychologists also about, hey, there are so many meeting points, let's talk. And that hesitation has gone out of my system at least. And uh, I just feel more resourceful because together, ultimately, the goal is awareness and the need is, uh, it's urgent. It's not, we cannot get into, hey, I am valid, you are not valid and all of that because uh, I think we need to come together. The need, it's really, really urgent and it's so pervasive mental health issues. Thank you, Anshul, for that. Shruti, you want to add something? Yeah, I think I have totally like uh, resonate with whatever Aprajita and Anshul have like already shared about I think talking about how we are trained is extremely important because many a times it is assumed especially from you know the images which are there on social media about drama therapy or music therapy where you know there is a group of people who are holding hand and they're all smiling it is colorful but it is not always like that it is like um uh, 
beyond fun it is beyond play and it is quite a serious training where uh, we had to engage in such you know intensive self reflective process of individual therapy group therapy group process and such intensive uh, requirement of completing the supervised hours i think that awareness is extremely important uh, and like a prajita said that music therapy is very much a clinical uh, field that awareness is very much important as well and you know i think although we are using the term alternative therapy sometimes you know it, it is taken as you know okay then it's not therapy it is something you know alternative but it is not it is something which is very much as intense and which is very much as aligned to the goals of you know the psychotherapy and uh, clinical psychology and psychiatry have been and yeah you know i think talking and talking and talking is something which is extremely important with di di different professionals and making them aware of you know the ethical and non ethical practices of creative arts therapies thank you shruti for that amazing answer now i have my one question from anshul and i would be request that if we can shorten up because we're running off of time so any case study you would like to share about any of the alternative therapy uh, just to off it because we are running a little of time also um i think there are a lot of it uh, but i think maybe if i share it just of how it works like i said that there is a flux of energy which which we if we go to yoga we call it prana and uh, and the prana flows and so optimum functionality whatever the idea is it's very subjective to each person and uh, it's just that when when emotions when a thought or a comment or an experience enters our energy body it creates a disturbance and more often trauma happens because that disturbance is dismissed that dis so in that disturbance the individual is isolated there is no resolution to it it's not even acknowledged and so when this disturbance is absorbed by the body it eventually comes into the physicality and that is when we feel the feelings and we may not have like an exact like i if i have an exam tomorrow and i feel anxious and i feel it on my chest yeah there is a cognitive awareness that i should not because i should be studying yeah but again now i can't do anything about this so eft at least helps with it's like a it's like the best first aid and then hypnotherapy is like it goes goes deeper it's first aid grounding what do we want all of the uh, perspective building is done with eft and then we go into uh hypnotherapy the, the case study i think i can mention because i have already mentioned about uh, uh that person and so it was the lead trauma was uh, uh this person it has experienced emotional uh childhood emotional neglect and then eventually a very rough breakup triggered that loneliness and so the voice of the lover is held by the lonely child and whatever was the idea or whatever was known of the person was held in the system and now uh, uh, there are there are question and answers and there's a conversation happening with that voice so uh, in hypnotherapy there was a somatic exchange of whatever you're holding on the fragment of body a lot of body work a lot of breath work with visualization of exchanging what i'm holding on to and honoring my truth standing in my truth so uh, that has been one phase and uh, and then eft helps also to continue the resolution that is found so to constantly check in with my body to constantly ground myself in the reality so it's all like uh, complementary thank you anshul so my last question is from all of you any last word you would want to tell our audience why we should try creative uh, therapy any one of you or any or all of you whatever comfortable with you guys that would be the last session the last question for our session today thank you so much uh, 
Okay, I can quickly say, uh, I think one has nothing to lose. Uh, in a traditional sense, it's it's not intrusive, right? Like it's not an injection. So, you know, try it with openness and you will absolutely have a takeaway. Even if that takeaway is that, oh, this just doesn't work for me, then that is also important uh, information for you to dig deeper on what does work for you. Um, so, yeah, I think that's my two cents. What about Shruti and Anshu? My answer is copy paste of Prajita. <laughs> like just try it because it exists and really like just experience it and then decide whether it's working for us or not. And to you? Um, I just feel that in itself, finding the right therapist. So we, we call it like the, the therapist shop window shopping <laughs> is very, <laughs> very, very difficult. And uh, if there are like, um, I think all the more reason to, because if, if you, you're not able to find the right fit, um, maybe you're looking in the wrong category. Uh, and everybody deserves to be heard, to feel connected and uh, to live as their own selves. And giving it a chance is giving yourself a chance. If other things are not working, to go on basically not giving up on yourself. Thank you so much to each one of you. Thank you, Prajita. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you, Anshu, for joining in, making people more aware about alternative therapy. And I would even say thank you to everyone who has joined us. And if you want to know more details about alternative therapy or creative wellness, you can log in into www.manushala.com or you can drop us a mail at committee at the Thank you guys for joining in.